next Monday night into Tuesday morning is what we're talking about here. And so that's the eve of the winter solstice into the morning of the winter solstice. And so, so on next Monday, the sun will make its lowest mountain arc, yeah? Right, because the, the sun moves low at winter. And so just a little, and it'll be that, that just shortest little day. And then the sun's going to set over there in that corner, right? So that would be the southwest corner. All right. And as the sun sets, the moon, the full moon, is going to rise over here in the farthest northeast corner, yeah? So it's like this. So here we are in the center, right? So this is an important moment, and I want to actually invite you to participate in that moment in a really conscious way, to like stand on the earth and reach out your arms to the fullness of sun and the fullness of moon and receive them into your body and be here, rooted in the earth and a part of the heavens. And so then that sun is going to set and the moon is going to rise until midnight when the sun is going to be deep below the earth behind and the moon is going to be high overhead in the south, as nearly as high as that mountain peak gets. So just see and feel yourself like lying, your body lying on the earth, feeling the full earth beneath you and the sun the other side of your body and the full moon overhead. And the full moon is going to be in a circle of stars called the sacred hoop. It's going to be right in the middle of the sacred hoop, overhead at midnight. So the sacred hoop, and we'll, we'll talk more about it, but it's a, some of the brightest stars that you're going to see in the winter sky. So Orion's involved, and Taurus, and the Pleiades, and the twins, and the big dog, and the little dog, and the goat star. And they're all making this sacred hoop that the moon's going to be right in the middle of. Now along with the path of the planets moving through that sacred hoop, the Milky Way also moves through that sacred hoop. And so this is one of only two places where the path of the planets and the Milky Way cross. It's in the middle of the sacred hoop, and it's at the edge of our galaxy. Now, it's kind of interesting to me that we've been so like, dude, the sun's going to be at the center of the galaxy, and winter solstice, of that the most important thing that ever happened. Has anybody ever heard that? Yeah. Right? That's like been the focus. And it's like, that is big time news, for sure. But the fact that the moon is going to be in the middle of the sacred hoop, where those paths cross at the edge of the galaxy, directly overhead at midnight on the eve of the winter solstice, with the sun directly beneath our bodies on the Earth, seems like a big deal to me, too. <laughs> and it seems like it gives a very different, uh, hmm, what's the word? possibility of what's happening in this moment beyond what we had imagined, thinking that we ourselves or our sun or the center of our galaxy was like the point. That maybe a part of what's happening at this time is that with the support of the galaxy and the sun and the earth and our own hearts and the moon and the sacred hoop, that it's an opportunity for us to recognize that we are actually citizens of the universe and all of those galaxies of which we are a part, and that this is the edge of the galaxy, and that this is a time and a moment where we're able to meet life beyond ourselves in a very real and connected and enlivened and enlivening and remembering kind of a way. Can you see it? Can you feel it? Yeah. So that's what's happening. And at that moment, there's a total eclipse. 
Exactly. Okay, so it's not just, I mean, just that in and of itself would be amazing. But it's like, you know, there's not always uh, an eclipse, right, when there's that alignment of the sun and the earth and the moon. But this time it's like so close in alignment that actually the, the earth's shadow is the moon's going to move through it. And so in the course of just a few hours, about three and a half hours, the moon is going to basically, it's like go through all the phases. You know, it will start kind of disappearing in like in reverse, kind of coolly. And then have come to totality from about quarter to midnight until a little bit before one o'clock. And then out the other side. And at that totality, it's likely to be red. And that's from all of the sunsets and sunrises around the earth. So see that and feel that as, as life saying, like, here is a condensed moment of process unfolding, of aliveness unfolding in our connectedness with the world beyond. So. <laughs> we have a total, exactly, so. Yeah. Total eclipse. So to be with that, to go through an entire lunar cycle in a few hours, right? Like that's the condensed kind of time and to lie on the earth and become a part of the cosmos while being here in earth. This isn't about us like escape velocity. This is about us showing up, being alive here with all the universe coming into play and be with us. So then it's gonna pass. And then the moon is going to go all the way over to this corner, over here, okay? So the farthest northwest corner. And then the sun is going to rise over here in the farthest southeast corner. So you notice we started out with these corners, right? And now we're ending up with these corners. So it's like the sun and the moon are actually redrawing the corners of the house in which we live, of the place where the path of the sun and the moon meets the earth. It's saying, like, here's your home, right here, within this, and by really being there, you can have this amazing connection. So, the moon sets over here with the sacred hoop and everybody, and then over here rises the winter solstice sun, which is a big deal. And where is the winter solstice sun during this era? It's right there at the place where the path of the planets crosses the Milky Way galaxy and the other place where they cross, toward the center of the galaxy. And so that's the place where the Milky Way is a lot brighter, right? Because center of the galaxy, that would be brighter, right? Us looking out toward the edge, not so bright. And so there's this alignment of the Earth and the sun and the center of our galaxy. And that's also at the corner of the house. And it's like right there is a place. So you, anybody seen the Milky Way, I'm hoping? Yeah? So it's, just like, it's like a river of stars, yeah? So one way of talking about the Milky Way is like a serpent biting its tail. Another way is talking about there's this place right where that would occur, which is toward the center of the galaxy, where there's a dark rift in the Milky Way, and it's toward the brightest part. And that's called the womb of the Milky Way body. And so the winter solstice sun is born right where the dark rift of the Milky Way womb body crosses the path of the planets. And it's the birth of a new sun and a new day and a new time. I've taken to calling this extreme syzygy. You guys know that word? You want to learn it? It's really fun. Syzygy. Syzygy. Exactly. Now say it fast. Syzygy. 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 So syzygy is when the sun and the earth and the moon are aligned with each other. And it actually goes to the, um, the root word in Greek for like yoke. And so it's kind of like something is like yoked with the sun. We're kind of like moving together in a way. 
And so pretty much any new moon or full moon is syzygy, right? Because it's like, you know, it's either the sun and the moon and the earth, or it's the sun and the earth and the moon, right? And so there's that alignment. But here we've got that total alignment, then with an eclipse, which means that alignment is like as exact as it gets. And then it's happening when the sun and the moon are at the crossing place of the path of the planets and the Milky Way, which is only two places. And then those are happening at the corners of the house where they meet the Earth. And for here on the West Coast, it's happening with the eclipse when the Earth is, ex or when the sun is exactly below us and the moon above. So I've been calling that extreme syzygy. <laughs> totally, exactly. Which reminds me of another essay.